Today I'm going to tell you a story about a leprechaun. Now if you don't know what a leprechaun is, a leprechaun is one of the Irish fairies. It's a little man fairy. Sometimes you see pictures of them with red beards and top hats. Leprechauns are famous for two things. One, they're cobblers. They make shoes. So you can often hear a leprechaun, you hear him going tap, 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 and maybe singing to himself. The other thing is they save gold. They're very rich and they have pots of gold, crocks of gold. They have them hidden all over the place. They bury them. And if you find a leprechaun and if you help him, he'll have to give you his gold. Now this story about the leprechaun is also about a little girl called Mary. Mary was a little Irish girl. Her family weren't poor, but they weren't very rich either. Mary had better clothes than the other girls in school. She had better food. She went on holidays, but she was never happy. She wanted to be really rich, so rich that she could buy herself anything in the world that she wanted. One day in the Easter holidays, Mary was bored. She decided to go down to the river. She couldn't swim, but she could paddle. It would pass the time. And as she was heading near the river, there was a great big bank of rushes and reeds that grew all along the river bank. And as she was going through them, she heard this noise, ah, ah, ah. And she wondered what it was. It didn't sound like an animal. So she went a bit further and it got louder, ah, ah. She could hear, help me, help me. And she went in the direction of the noise. And what did she see but a leopard? But he had got his foot stuck in the mud and he couldn't get it out and he was trying to pull it and pull it and pull it but he hadn't the strength to get himself out. Mary had a good idea. She knew what to do when she saw a leprechaun in trouble. So she went up to the leprechaun and she says, Good morning. Are you in trouble? He said, Yes, please, please help me. My foot is stuck deep in the mud and I can't pull it out. She said, well, I could help you there. But she says, if I help you, you will have to give me your pot of gold. The leprechaun said, yeah, that's true. I will. I'll have to give it to you. So she, she was so happy she could hardly contain herself. But she reached out and she pulled and she pulled up with a big... <laughs> she freed his foot from the mud and out the leprechaun came. She didn't let him go, though, because leprechauns can move like lightning. They'll disappear like smoke. So she took the leprechaun by the waist and she said, right, I want your pot of gold. They said, well, actually, you've come to the right place. My gold is buried right here where my foot was in the mud. It's buried right there. He said, I buried it on a dry day. I was coming back to check on it and my foot got stuck so deep. But it'd be no trouble to you to get it out. Mary said, yeah, but I would have to, he said, but you have to dig deep. And she said, I know, to dig at all, she said, in this ground, I need a spade. I haven't got a spade with me, so I don't, oh, I don't know. And she thought, and she thought, and she said, i tell you what, she said, I'll mark this place. The reeds were quite tall around here. In fact, they were taller than Mary. So she pulled off her hair ribbon, a bright red ribbon, and she tied it round the nearest reeds. She actually tied it round three reeds so that it would be very secure. And that would show her exactly where the gold was buried. She looked at the leprechaun. He didn't look too happy. No leprechaun is happy if he has to give away his gold. And she said to him, I want you to promise me that you, I can keep this gold if I dig it up. He said, of course you can. I have to. I have to. That's that's the law. I have to give it to you. And she said, well, tell me this too. Will you promise me not to take my ribbon off those reeds? And he said, I promise. I will not take your ribbon off those reeds. Mary said, OK, I'll go and get a spade. She let go of the leprechaun and he disappeared like lightning. But Mary wasn't worried. She knew exactly where the gold was buried. So 
off she went home, skipping and hopping as happy as could be. She pushed her way through all the reeds, because they were tall reeds, and there were rushes around her feet. She didn't care if her feet were getting wet. She didn't care about anything. She ran home. She knew exactly where her father kept the spade. She didn't stop to tell her mother and father anything. She thought she'd surprise them. And with visions of a new house, new clothes, everything she wanted in her mind, she dragged the spade off down the field, down, down, down towards the rushes. She saw that something looked a bit different as she approached. She couldn't work out what it was for a minute. But as she got very close, she saw that on every single reed, there was a red ribbon. There was no way that Mary could find out which was the one that had the pot of gold buried under it. Mary never got her gold and the leprechaun won. The leprechaun played a trick on Mary because they're very slippery creatures, leprechauns. They will play, they keep their word, but they can play tricks. I'm sure you all know what a hare is. It looks a bit like a rabbit, but its ears are much longer and it leaps about when it's moving through a field. There once was a hare called Hoppy, but Hoppy the hare never got his real name. He was called Happy because that's what he was. He was a happy hare. He hopped when he was happy. He flapped his ears when he was happy. He wrinkled his nose when he was happy. Sometimes in winter he got a bit downcast, but when spring came he was very happy. When winter left, the days got longer, the birds sang louder, the sun was warmer, and Daisy sprang up. Happy would put up his ears to listen to the bird song. He would hop happily through the long grass, and he would put his nose down to the daisies to scent them. He would shout to the sun, keep shining, and the sun would reply, I will, today. And the sun shone, the birds sang, the daisies bloomed, and Happy was very happy. And each morning he would look up at the sun and say, keep shining, and the sun would say, I will, for today. But one March morning, Happy wakened up. He couldn't see the sun. There was cloud everywhere. It was cool. The birds had stopped singing. The grass wasn't warm at all and the daisies folded over their petals. Happy looked up and shouted, Where are you, son? And in a small voice the son said, I'm tired today. Let me sleep. Happy was sad. He nibbled grass. He ran as fast as he could round the field. But he was still sad. His ears were down. There was no bird song to hear. There was no warm grass to hop through. The daisies were closed. There was no scent to sniff. For six days the cloud covered the sky and there was no sun. And every day Happy looked up to the sky and shouted, Where are you, sun? And each day the sun said in a small voice, I'm tired today. Let me sleep. On the seventh morning, Happy wakened to find the sun was back, not a cloud to be seen. In the middle of the blue sky, the sun blazed brighter than Happy had ever seen it. Birds were singing loudly. Daisy were starring the grass everywhere he looked. Are you tired now, sun? he asked. No, said the sun. But watch me. This is for you, Happy. And Happy looked up at the sun and the sun began to dance. It whirled and it twirled and it bounced and it shimmered and it got so strong that Happy couldn't look at it any more. It was so bright. So this is why you were resting, said Happy. Yes, said the sun. I'm going to dance like this every Easter morning and you are the first animal to see me do it. Happy really lived up to his name then. He was so happy he thought he would burst. He put up his ears to hear the bird song. He bent to sniff the daisies. But that wasn't enough. He too began to dance. He raced through the grass. He whirled and he twirled and he bounced and he shimmered. Happy was very, very happy. And every March, hares still dance. 
people say they are mad. But you know, and I know, why they are all as happy was that Easter morning. Have you ever seen a monkey eat a banana? Monkeys love bananas. But monkeys think they own all the bananas in the world. And this is how it happened. Long ago when the world was young, there was an old woman and she had a garden full of banana trees. And as they ripened, she looked up at them and she thought, not too sure how I'm going to harvest these. They're very high up in the tree and I'm a very old woman. Then she had a bright idea. Monkeys like bananas, she said. I'll ask the biggest monkey to help me harvest the bananas. And that's what she did. When the bananas got ripe, she sent for the biggest monkey. And she said to him, will you help me to harvest the bananas? If you fetch all the bananas down from the tree, she said, I'll give you half of them. And the monkey looked up and there were hundreds of bananas. And he thought, oh, this is good. This is good. So he agreed to it. So he climbed up one tree and he picked the bananas and he climbed up the next tree and he worked away till he had all the bananas on the ground. And he said to the old woman, remember, you said I could have half. She said, yeah, of course I said that. So he said, well, I'll divide them. And he did. He divided them into two heaps. The best bananas he kept for himself, the big, fat, juicy, ripe bananas. And on the old woman's pile, there were the same number of bananas, but some of them were still green, some of them were overripe and squishy, and some were all wizened up. But the biggest monkey didn't care. He grabbed all the bananas and swung away through the trees with them. But the old woman was angry. And she said, I want to get even with this monkey. He's not going to get away with a trick. She didn't sleep all that night. She was thinking of some way of getting her own back. And in the morning, she had an idea. She took some wax. You know what wax is. Candles are made of wax. And when wax is heated, it gets soft. And you can mould it and make whatever you want with it. That's what the old woman did. She got a great big piece of wax and she left it in the sun till it softened a bit. And she moulded it to make it look like a boy. And when it was cold and hard, she put clothes on it. And then she put a basket of bananas on its head and she set it out by the roadside. The biggest monkey came along and he saw these bananas. Now he had plenty of bananas, but he was very greedy and he wanted more. So he shouted, give me a banana. Nothing happened. He wasn't too happy. So he shouted louder, Hey boy, there, give me a banana. I'm hungry. But still nothing happened. And then he said, Hey you, give me a banana. If you don't, I'll knock that basket off your head and all the bananas will fall to the ground. Still, this boy didn't answer. So the monkey got very cross. He reached out to grab a banana but the boy had been standing in the sun and the wax had got soft and the monkey's paw stuck in the wax didn't help the monkey's temper he said let go of me and give me a banana and he reached out with his other hand and it stuck in the wax too and he pulled and he pulled but he couldn't get himself free now he was so cross with the boy that he kicked him but yes, you're right, that foot stuck in the wax. Let me go, he says, or I'll knock you over and I'll have all the bananas for myself. And he kicked out with his other foot. And that stuck in the wax too. Now the biggest monkey pulled and he tugged and he wriggled and he moved himself every way he could. He pulled so hard. And all the bananas toppled out of the basket onto the road. Then he howled and he yelled and he made such a noise that all the other monkeys came running, running, running. They came through the trees. What's the matter? What's the matter? Unstick me, he said. I've been tricked. All of the monkeys tried. They 
pulled, they tugged, they pushed, but they couldn't free him from the little wax boy. Then the very smallest monkey had an idea. If we climb to the top of a tree, stand on each other's shoulders with the loudest monkey on top, he could shout to the sun and ask him to melt the little wax boy completely. So that's what they did. They climbed up a tall tree and at the top they climbed on top of each other's shoulders and the monkey with the loudest voice shouted to the sun, Melt the wax! We need to free the biggest monkey! So that's what the sun did. He shone his hottest rays down on the little wax boy and it melted his body and the biggest monkey could pull his hands and feet free. The old woman said, mm, These monkeys are clever. I'll never really get the better of them. I wonder what I'll do next year when I've got all these bananas to harvest. I'm not going to ask them again to help me. But I won't be able to harvest them myself. And she thought and she thought and then she had an idea. I'm going to move to a different place, she said, and I'm going to grow beans and I won't need any help to harvest them. The monkeys were delighted. And ever since that day, they think that they own all the bananas. That's a story from Brazil and I hope you enjoyed it.